Hi, welcome to Toolbox Tuesday's very first live recording. I'm so excited to try this out and give this thing wings. It's always so much more fun when I can connect and interact with y'all. So if you've hopped on and you can see me and uh, you can hear me, go ahead and drop me some hearts, please, uh, so that I know that we're, we're running and all is going well. All right, in the meantime, um, what is Toolbox Tuesday? Well, Toolbox Tuesday is a spiritual toolbox, Power Tool on High, the Academy's quick reference resource for all things spiritually sound and for the pursuit of the excellence in the advancement of the accurate knowledge of truth, which is key to the transformative power of Christ. For those of you who do not yet know me, my name is Diane McGee. I'm founder and director of Power Tools on High, an academy for Bible students and a source of higher education for seekers of truth. A spiritual veteran in allegiance with the kingdom of heaven, a slave girl of Christ, a Bible student, and a spiritual fitness coach for approaching Zion Elite Coaching, Christ-centered transformational coaching that assists people to move from where they are to being connected in spirit and to where God wants them to be. In spirit-inspired and spirit-driven sessions, the client is encouraged to find God's vision for their lives and to move from following their own agendas to pursuing God's purposes, which results in a joyful, thriving life full of purpose, meaning, and love. Again, welcome to Toolbox Tuesday. Okay, so this week, we will be considering um, how love throws fear outside because fear exercises a restraint. And this week's tool is brought to you by First John 4.18. Okay, so let's start by first answering this question. In what way does fear act as a restraint? Well, fear can hold us back from embracing our full divine potential as Christians. And divine, I mean, and wish to clarify, divine is relating to the things we receive directly from God for our, for example, um, divine inner inspiration. Have you ever received a divine download? Uh, love, even intervention love for our Father, God, His Son, our Lord Jesus, and God's active force, the Holy Spirit, our helper, assists us to cast fear aside, having our confidence in God's abilities, not our solely alone. Recognizing it for ourselves that with God, all things are possible. Not sure what happened there. Uh, Matthew 19, 26 for reference. All With God, all things are possible. Okay. The exercise of our faith in this truth allows us to connect with God and embrace the divine qualities given us by God more fully. <clears throat> Love acts as our freedom advocate to release us from our fear binding hold that can act as a restraint towards true love's offering. So what are some examples where uh, love can free us from fear's restraint? Can you think of any ways where love has cast fear aside in your life? Go ahead and drop a thumbs up or a heart if, if you can relate to that. Um, fear acting as a restraint or a barrier in your life. I, I can think of a couple areas where fear may act as a restraint in our lives. For example, fear of man. Fear of man may act as a restraint when we care too much about what other people think of us. When this is present in our lives, it may act as a restraint from us speaking life-saving truth that brings people comfort and gives hope. Because let's face it, throughout history, sayings of salvation have not been popular nor widely accepted. 
prophets have been imprisoned, ill-treated, severely persecuted, and along with God's very own son, even tortured and killed. So naturally, speaking out in truth can cause fear. This is where our godly fear, which is profound love, honor, respect, and reverence for God, the creator of the heavens, the earth, the seas, and the things in them comes in. Yes. When our godly fear is greater than any of our morbid fears, we care more about what God thinks of us than what any other person thinks. And we also have confidence that God is our helper. God is the sustainer of our souls so that we can be of good courage and say, God is my helper. I will not be afraid. And in this way, love casts fear aside, not allowing fear to act as a restraint. And another example of common fear we may experience is fear of present day events and future day events. What's going to happen here on earth, you know? Um, it would appear as though we are living in a time of history where we can see the front lines of the Great Tribulation. Um, and we're marching straight towards it. This great tribulation that Jesus spoke about of Matthew 24, 21 through 22. Here we read, for then there will be great tribulation. Such has not occurred since the world's beginning until then. No, nor will ever occur again. In fact, unless those days were cut short, no flesh would be saved. So here we get the picture that it will all eventually hit the universal fan. And we know we can expect things to get increasingly worse on earth as conditions escalate to this great tribulation where God will say enough and he will step in with his war of Armageddon and let me pull up that scripture for you and bring an end to all things that are unjust, corrupt and causing pain and grief. Even the last enemy death he will bring to nothing. Death will be no more. So this, these things, instead of giving us fear, they inspire hope because we know that God's going to step in and bring relief. And the prophecy in Revelation 21, 1 through 4 will come to be after the thousand years. And look, the tent of God is with mankind and they will be his people and he will reside with them and 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 god himself will be with them and he will wipe out every tear from their eyes and death will be no more neither will mourning nor outcry nor pain be anymore the former things have passed away and although we look forward to god's coming kingdom which Jesus taught us to pray for, um, we are not necessarily looking forward to the things leading up to the events that must take place, the things that are destined to occur. <laughs> However, God does not want us to be fearful of the things that are destined to occur, but to use our time wisely in exercising our faith to build ourselves and others up in love. Love is the name of the game, not hate. Okay. So 2 Corinthians 6, 2 tells us, in the time of favor, I heard you. In the day of salvation, I helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. You see, the truth is, God is not slow in respecting his promise, as some consider slowness, but he's patient with us because he's not desiring any to be destroyed and taken by these things. But he wants us all to attain to repentance and have a re relationship with him. And so engaging in the Lord's work and focusing on uh, God's love so that we have implicit trust in God 
and we're relying upon the salvation of Jesus and we depend on gifts of the Holy Spirit and its fruitage working itself out through our hearts and our lives to demonstrate God's love to all, his surpassing love for the whole human race. And this way we can cast fear aside, not allowing it to act as a restraint. We can be courageous and strong, just like Joshua. Knowing God's plans for the future removes us from the place of anxiety and places us smack dab in the middle of peace. This way, we can continue living as peaceable people and be pursuing it. Holding on to the promises of God with grateful hearts gives us hope. Surely, God's day will be fear-inspiring. However, those hoping in God will not fear. We will not fear. For God gave us not a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. <laughs> I'm still working on that part. <laughs> Indeed, if the fear found within us is healthy, godly fear, again, a profound love and reverence for God, we can cast fears that exercise restraints outside with love. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's power tool, Perfect Love Throws Fear Outside, based on 1 John 4.18. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the chat. Say hi. Um, I value your time considering these more important things. Next week, next week, join us again. I'm going to try to go live again, try this live thing out, see how it goes. Uh, join us for the next spiritual tool directed by spirit and truth. Until then, may we through love be casting fear outside, and may it result in the salvation of all sorts of people and an accurate knowledge of truth. Signing off for now in spiritual fitness with agape and so much philia. Bye now. Thanks for joining. Oh, I just see my question. Yeah.